The Biltmore Estate here in Asheville, North Carolina, the gracious host for this year's 2021 Southern Conference football kickoff. Such a pleasure to be here and to be talking Southern Conference football for the fall ahead. And welcome back to the show. Pete Kennedy back with you along with Rusty Wright, head coach of the Chattanooga Mox, a team that looked like you were in the hunt for another SOCON title for the Mox in the spring. You were 3-1 and one in the conference, 3-2 and two overall. And what happened to so many programs and so many places, just roster issues got in the way. Way, had had to be disappointing to suddenly have to put the brakes on the season. Well, I mean, you, you want to play as much as you want to play, and, and that was the thing, but we moved on from it and looking forward to the fall. And how much do you think uh, the guys in, in maybe some ways wanted to motivate uh, off of the fact that, that they had a season interrupted and, and last year was so odd? Did that serve as a motivator at all? I, yeah, I mean, I think it was good for us. I think what we were able to do in the spring was good for us, and, and I think it gave us a sense of, okay, we can go play, we can go do these things. We have a chance if we stick together and, and do things the right way, we have a chance to go win and go compete. And, and I think that has helped propel us a little bit into the summer and, and get us moving in the right direction, direction. A year ago in the summertime, you got a lot of attention because you said, hey, we're willing to play in the fall. Mm -hmm. You know, come one, come all, we'll go wherever we need to go. You ended up playing one game in the fall, mm -hmm. but I think that was interesting. I mean, I, if nothing else, it helped get the Chattanooga word out there. <laughs> well. We were all trying to play in the fall and trying to figure it out. And that's all we wanted to do was play, you know, uh, last fall. And, and, and it didn't work out. We got one game in, but we were able to salvage something out of it. But I think that was the thing was we were trying to figure out a way to play, you know, and, and kind of how we did in the spring. You were trying to figure out a way to play. And hopefully we can move on from that and get going in the right direction. You played a competitive game against Western Kentucky, an FBS team. You lose by three up there. Did that in some ways at least help with – some technique things you'd been, you know, hammering into the guys during practice in the fall. Did it help set you up for the spring at all? Yeah, well, the biggest thing is, is we had an opportunity to go play. And, you know, I'd only been there for one season. We were trying to just start getting things going in the right direction. And, and you hated to throw brakes on it, not do anything for another year and all that. But it did. It, it kind of got us going saying, hey, we, we can go play. We got guys here that can go play and go compete at a high level, and they'll give us a chance to win. And I think that was the biggest thing. The kids saw that as the biggest thing, really. And it's interesting, too, you mentioned just wanting to go play. And, you know, still you're getting ready for your third season now. But your first spring, you had all kinds of issues with the field. I think you were doing some practices in a parking lot. Uh, yeah, that's the thing. I mean, it's just been one thing after another since you returned there to be the head coach. Yeah, and I'm I, again, if we can ever get to whatever normal is going to be for us now, I, I'll be happy with it and go. But our kids have been good about adjusting and moving on the fly, and our coaches have been good, and we just that's just haven't been part of life. We just adjusted and went on. You'll return your quarterback, Drayton Arnold. Uh, you've got Robert Riddle, a Chattanooga native, who transfers in from Mercer, who had really some fabulous games at Mercer. It was just an injury issue. I think quarterback's going to be an interesting position for you. What kind of battle can folks expect going into the fall? Well, we got three guys. we got Robert, we got uh, Drayton, and uh, Cole Copeland's back with us for another year. And, you know, we're going to play the guy that doesn't turn it over and gives us the best chance to win. And they'll have to go compete and do that in practice. And I think that's the best part about it. There's competition in that room. And, you know, we played Drayton and Cole both in the, in the spring. And just going to see how it plays out. I think a couple of years ago, you had a quarterback who transferred in Nick Tiano your first year. Seems like he was the perfect quarterback based on the running game you still have that you had then. That's the kind of guy that you'd like your quarterback maybe to template to? Sure, but you, you got to do what your kids can do. Yeah. So, I mean, that's the thing. We're not, we, we'll adjust pretty good to what we've got, and mm -hmm. uh, our, our offensive staff does a good job of that. So, yeah, would you like them all to be 6'5, 240 pounds and an arm <laughs> like Nick's? Yeah, sure you would, but yeah. you got to go with what you got. And he was probably bragging on that sprint he made to the end zone on that great fake against Wofford sure. in the rain. Sure. You probably had to hear that for the rest of the season sure. about how no he doubt. was a sprinter. Alim Ford took this league by storm a couple of years ago, and then uh, Terrell Price, also a nice dynamic combo. It seems like your running game is in a really good place. It is. Uh, Alim's back healthy. Um, Terrell Price is back healthy. Uh, Geno Appleberry played for, a lot for us in the spring back, and then Lance Jackson played for us uh, one game a lot in the spring. So we've got four guys there we feel comfortable with being in the game. But, you know, Alim, Alim's a different guy. I mean, he is. He's a different guy in this league. And But I'm really excited about that room. I, I love how those guys have acted, you know, come together and just really jailed one another and, and going to give themselves a chance to be good. How much does it help you got five starting 
offensive lineman coming back. From the confidence standpoint of a running back who, who has faith in these guys, and Cole Strange is one of your leaders and as good as anyone you'll find in FCS, uh, but I would think it, it kind of works both ways. They're comfortable knowing the backs they're blocking for, and the, and the backs behind them know that, that these guys have been making holes for them uh, over the past couple of years. Yeah, it makes life a lot easier. I mean, we got a lot of guys that have played a lot of football up front. Cole's one of them. Uh, Harrison Moon, McClendon Curtis. You know, I, I think those guys have really started to come into their own the last, you know, spring and half a season or whatever it's been. Um, they they take pride in being good. So, they're, you know, you always like hanging around with those offensive linemen. They're always usually pretty good guys and all that stuff. But they've had, they've, they understand the job they're trying to do and what we're trying to get done. They understand schematically what we're trying to do and how we need to do it. And, and, that's, and I think in the long run, that's going to be a huge asset for us. Back in the early middle part of the past decade, you were an assistant on the Chattanooga staff as you guys won repeated Southern Conference titles. You could run, but you were pretty also a pretty dynamic, I thought, at wide receiver. Uh, Kenori McKinnon and, and Reggie Anderson and that group are back. Uh, some of the expectations with your wide receiver room. Yeah, I think we got some guys that have some good skill sets. I think the one neat thing is we don't have we, we have different skill sets at every spot. Uh, and uh, we've got some young guys I'm really excited about watching this uh, fall, you know, be a larger part. But no question, uh, Reggie and Kenori had good springs for us. Uh, you know, we took Reggie. He was a safety at Middle Tennessee. He wasn't even playing wide receiver. So he just wanted to come somewhere and play wide receiver. And, we took him two years ago, so he's worked really hard at being good. Kenori's worked really hard at being good. Andrew Manning had a good spring for us. But we got some young guys that are going to push to play as well that have done better in the spring and had good summers. So I'm excited about the competition that's going to be in that room, honestly, because I think there's guys that can step up and play that you maybe haven't heard of. On the defensive side, Devonche Maxwell seems like he's been there for 10 years. <laughs> Freshman of the uh, year defensively in the conference in 2018. Seems like the kind of guy that could really be an impact player just about every snap this season. He is. He is at our level. I mean, he's he's one of the best ones, I think, at our level, playing his spot. And he's a good young man. I mean, and that's the thing. He's, he's, he's worked really hard at it. He's changed his body a little bit this summer and worked really hard at that. Um, he's got to play at a dominant level more. He can do more at a higher level, longer than what he has been doing. Um, so, you know, I, I'm, I'm excited about what he brings, and he makes those other guys around him a little better. So he makes defensive end Jay Person and the nose guard Christian Smith, he makes those guys better, and, and we just have to keep – you know, keep keep him fresh as long as we can, give ourselves a chance. A couple of guys who transferred in on that defensive line, one from Purdue, Giovanni Revere, another from Rhode Island, and uh, Montez Wilson. What do they bring to the table? Well, Giovanni's a Chattanooga guy. He actually went to school at Macaulay there in Chattanooga, so he came back home, uh, going to graduate in December. So we're excited about that. He's actually got this year and one more year left. Um, bring us some needed depth that we didn't have when a year ago when I got there and thankfully COVID's happened not thankfully it's happened but you know we had a chance to hang on to some guys for sure. a little longer sure and uh, it's helped those guys out it's just given us some depth that we didn't have in 2019 I mean it was we trotted a group out there and they pretty much stayed the whole time there was nobody behind them and and those things so those guys give us some depth and they give us quality depth more than anything else. And on the back end of the defense, uh, Dowdell, Lawson, names that have been around for a while. Tell me about them and, and kind of what that, that back group looks like, linebackers and in the secondary. Yeah, so Cam Jones and Ty Beck both come back. Uh, they're juniors for us this year. They had really good springs. I thought towards the end of 2019, those guys started playing like linebackers we've had there in the past. They started playing at a level they should play at and play like they should. Um, got some young guys in that group, group that have to keep going. And on the back end, we got a, a lot of guys played a lot of football. You know, uh, Brandon Dowdell, Jarrell Lawson, Kamiron Smith starts at one corner for us. Jordan Jones starts at the other corner. Uh, might be the biggest bunch of competitors we have on the team you know, back there on that back end and, and how they try to go about their day and, and working and those things. All four of those guys back there, I think, have graduated already, which is unheard of. I mean, it's awesome, you sure. know. So uh, really excited to watch that group take another step, you know, and I, I think that's one thing that will help us as well. You know what it's like to win a SOCON title. This is a group of guys that have a lot of talent. You now maybe have the depth. Do you feel the same vibe you felt back uh, when you were an assistant in this uh, program? Well, uh, you know, I know we have the talent to give ourselves an opportunity every Saturday. That's the biggest thing. And we've got good enough players to give ourselves an opportunity. It's going to be watching those guys 
go put those things into action every Saturday. I think that's the one thing we haven't done consistently since I've been here, and I hadn't had a chance to do it consistently or anything like that, but I think that's the one thing. That's the next step we have to take as a program is do that consistently week in, week out. Because when you got good players, that's what you should go do. Sure. And uh, that's what we're going to have to figure out. All right, Rusty Wright, head coach of the Chattanooga Mox. They have a Thursday opener, September 2nd, and will get tested out of the gate against visiting Austin P. That should be one heck of a battle between the SoCon and the Ohio Valley Conference. Coming up next, Drew Cronick, second-year head coach of the Mercer Bears. We'll visit with him when we continue from Asheville on our 2021 Southern Conference kickoff show.